Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. Northwest of Missoula, Montana, it occurred near our residence, which was located about four miles deep into the woods from the nearest mainland roadway. The only way to get to our residence was by following an old dirt road that winds its way through the forest. It has been a while since this incident happened, but I remember it well. This incident happened during summer. I was working in my father's wood shop when my brother, who was 19 at the time, burst through the door. He was nearly out of breath and distraught looking. He immediately demanded that I come outside right now. I asked him what was wrong, but he just said, come out here now, quick. I hurriedly followed him outside. It was late afternoon and the sun was just beginning to wane in the deeper parts of the forest. I asked him what was the matter. He told me to shush and listen. I could hear that our grandparents' dog was going berserk. I could also recognize the bark of our dog in the distance as well. I asked my brother what was going on with the dogs and if they were fighting again. He said, shh, not the dogs, listen. We were both silent. I didn't hear anything. I asked him what I was supposed to be listening for. He said he heard something really weird really freaky. I asked him what it sounded like. He said he couldn't really explain it, that it just sounded really weird. I told him maybe that he heard a mountain lion, as I had heard them on several occasions. They make really strange sounds like an inhuman woman screaming bloody murder. He said it didn't sound like a scream. He took off running down the road toward our grandparents' house, calling for me to follow. I ran after him. Halfway to our grandparents' house, I heard the sound. We both stopped in our tracks. I yelled to him, what the heck was that? He excitedly replied, that's the sound I heard, that's it. I had heard a lot of strange sounds growing up in the deep woods over the years. Elk mating calls, ruffled grouse beating their wings, coyotes, but never anything like this. I can't really describe the sound except that it was a high-pitched tone from a living thing that was very resonant, powerful, and well-controlled in its execution. It made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Soon, whatever it was out there in the woods ahead of us made the sound again, this time for a shorter duration and slightly broken. Another period of silence, other than the dogs going nuts. We continued running towards our grandparents' house. We soon arrived where the dogs were. Our dog was standing next to our grandparents' dog, which was tied up. They were both looking and barking into the forest in the direction we had heard the sounds coming from. I had never seen them bark like this, not even at bears. All of a sudden, we heard a similar sound come from a completely different direction of the woods, on the opposite side of us. Immediately, the call was answered by another loud report where we originally heard the first sound. Whatever was out there, there seemed to be two of them, and they seemed to be communicating. We continued to listen. Nothing for a minute or two, 
Then we heard two more distinct calls, this time from the same general direction in the woods, yet separated. They were now coming from a further distance. Again, they seemed to be replying or communicating to one another. We continued to listen for several minutes, but the sound did not occur again. We told our family members about it, but no one really paid much attention as they had not heard the sounds, and since we lived right in the middle of an area used by bears and other animals to travel through the wilderness regularly, the tribe caught seven bears in one summer using live bear traps near our house. They probably assumed it was just some animal out in the woods. In any case, I have never forgotten the incident, and often think of the surreal event Every time I go back into the wilderness, it was between 2 and 3 p.m. in very dense forest. I had another experience with a close friend the following year involving what we believed were Bigfoot tracks. When we told her about the incident, my friend's grandmother, who is in her late 80s and had lived in that location where we saw the tracks her whole life, she relayed a story about how she and her husband had seen a Sasquatch in the area over 20 years ago. On to the next one. In Lewis and Clark County in Montana, about 8 to 10 years ago, six of us were hunting south of Indian Meadows Trailhead. We were basically hunting across the rough and timbered area in pairs. Brad and I heard the noise in the distance. It sounded like a high-pitched scream related to a rusty gate being opened slowly. There was wind and unsettled weather. It was in the afternoon. Later, we learned that others in the group also heard it, even closer to them. Steve and Miles had their wives with them, as we combed the varying terrain searching for elk. Everyone had high-powered hunting rifles. Steve and Jermaine apparently got together with Miles and Sherry and decided to take the first main game trails out of the area. Steve was an avid bear hunter and was very disturbed about what he heard. Brad and I continued the hunt, really not getting the full impact of the sound effects I heard the sound one other time in the same area. Miles and I were hunting elk with bow and arrow, and I had something come into my calling and never had the opportunity to see it close to the same area. No one had a visual on the animal. No track visible, even at times when the snow was on the ground. We've all heard stories about creatures crossing the roadway early in the morning, other sightings, and very rank smells in the undergrowth areas. In relation to our hearing the vocalization, Miles spoke to me on the telephone one day about a television program about Bigfoot and someone that had recorded soundtrack of a believed Bigfoot scream or call. Miles indicated that his wife came from her place of rest in the other room and stated, what was that noise? Miles replied to her, it was the recorded sound of a presumed Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Sherry replied, That is the sound we heard hunting across from your dad's house. Miles's dad's house is one of the last homes before you reach the wilderness bounty. Much of the area is being logged and areas of dense canopy are dwindling as we speak for this area. All we heard was just the sound no tracks or visual contact with the animal making the noise. There were six witnesses elk hunting and hiking through the country, four men and two ladies. It was afternoon, 2 to 4 p.m., partly cloudy with sun, no current snow or rain. Some areas were very dense and hard to see next to you. It was dark in there. The area was spruce, pine, and other conifers. The sound, as best as I could remember, came from down in that area. I believe that would be correct. There are all kinds of stories from this area, 
once one starts talking to various people of the area. On to the next one. It was July of 2015 when a couple of my besties and I were on a hike in Rocky Mountain National Park on our way to Dream Lake. We were about four hours into the trek and were following a meandering trail at some elevation, working our way around an enormous boulder. From our vantage point, Long's Peak was visible way in the distance. To our left, and falling away from the trail was a slope covered in some grass, brush, and small pointed pines of many shapes and sizes. As we had just made it around this large boulder, there were several other smaller and flatter rocks that seemed to be inviting us to take a break, and so we did. The trail here almost gave the appearance of tan beach sand, in contrast to the surrounding color palette. Just ahead of us, at a distance of about 200 feet, this tan trail wound around a bend and vanished from view. The three of us had chosen different spots to cop a squat on two different folders. My back was to the very view that I just described to you because of where and how I chose to sit, as with my friend Kevin. Bobby, however, chose to sit on a smaller boulder that was about 10 feet down the slope and was facing towards the direction of our heading. I was munching on a couple of packages of Belvedas and drinking some Gatorade when Bobby said, Hey, guys, there's someone coming. It was about two seconds after what he had just said registered in my brain that he had then said, What the heck is that? Startled? Kevin and I quickly spun around. There, the three of us were now sitting with our collective eyes fixed on a large brown figure that had stopped dead in the middle of the trail ahead of us, having just come around the bend. I guess momentarily it hadn't registered in Bobby's mind that he was looking at a Bigfoot, because we now were all too well aware of what it was we were seeing. The creature appeared to be equally as shocked as we were from the way it had suddenly stopped and stood there. It was staring right at us and began to rock from side to side. At this point, we had all gotten to our feet and were looking right at it. I think the distance was about 125 feet or so, if my memory served me correctly, as we just faced each other off. What I'm going to say may seem really off the wall, but I'm going to say it anyway. In that moment, a deep sense of despair and loneliness started to overwhelm me. It hit me like a spiritual wave, and this feeling wasn't for us, but rather for this creature. I felt as though it was emotionally distraught and wanted to communicate that to us, but couldn't. There was absolutely nothing aggressive whatsoever about its posture or its actions. To me, it was just exuding sadness. What I did next, only a pet lover will understand. But I gently raised my hand and said, Hello there, we are your friends. I tell you the truth and no lie. In that moment, I didn't have an ounce of fear in me about this creature. I only felt sorrow as though it badly needed help. No sooner had I said this than it raised its arm gently and kind of nodded its head, retreating back from where it had come. As soon as it had moved out of my sight, my friend Kevin, not knowing how or what I was feeling, said, That was awful. I asked, What do you mean? He said, I felt like I was at a funeral or something. It was like a heaviness was all over me while that Bigfoot was standing there. I told him, I can't believe that you just said that because all I could feel was a sadness about the thing and you confirmed it with your own lips. He said to me, yeah, man, it was like it just wanted to talk to somebody and was even more upset that it couldn't. We all slowly walked to where it had just been 
and could actually still see it walking back down the trail. As we stood watching it, it turned its body one time to look back at us and disappeared. When I say disappeared, I'm not talking about around a blind corner. I'm talking about it vanished, like now you see me and now you don't. If you catch my drift, the three of us just stood there looking at each other and the trail as if to say, did we just see that? Yet, we just had. I looked down at my feet, and I could clearly see the print of what would have been a large human-like feet in the sandy surface of the trail, this being that actually had substance to it, having left tracks, had just vanished before our very eyes. I have no explanation for what I have just conveyed to you, nor will I attempt to rationalize the event in any way, shape, or form. You can simply accept it or reject it entirely, and I will understand. As the creature stood in the trail at a fairly close distance to us, it seemed to be almost seven feet tall, and at its shoulders twice as broad as the trail, being some four feet or so. It had simply come to a halt upon seeing us and was gently rocking back and forth from the waist up. The hair was somewhat long and brown, and I could see the skin of its chest through its fur. The skin on its face looked like a weather-beaten dark gray color. The hands were the same. How is it that something that has form and shape and function can just disappear is beyond me? I really don't expect anyone to frankly believe me, yet I have told the story again and again, and now I have told it to you. On to the next one. Near Lewiston, Northern Michigan, in September of 1992, a hunter who was setting out bear bait in a heavily wooded area one afternoon was suddenly overcome by an uncomfortable, eerie feeling. As he made his way back to his vehicle, he observed a seven- or eight-foot, dark-haired, colored, upright creature crossing the two-track dirt road in one step, about sixty yards ahead of him. Eager to find out what this thing was, the hunter proceeded, cautiously, to the spot where he had seen it cross over. According to his testimony, when he peered into the brush where the figure had vanished, he could discern a dark gorilla face peering at him from behind a cedar tree about 30 feet away. After 15 seconds or so, the animal turned and moved deeper into the forest. The hunter readily admitted that he had never believed that Bigfoot could actually exist until that day. On to the next one. Northeast of Las Vegas in New Mexico, the gentleman in question had pulled over at a gas station in order to use the facilities, but quickly realized that the place was closed. Feeling a certain sense of urgency to resolve the situation, the man crept several yards behind the gas station and began to relieve himself near a dumpster. Almost immediately, he started to have an uneasy feeling that there was someone coming up behind him. But when he looked over his shoulder, he didn't see anyone there. As he hurried back to his car, the witness glanced back one more time, and this time he noticed a huge animal crouching in the tall grass. The thing was slightly illuminated by the radiant light from the parking lot, yet the instant it realized that it had been spotted, the beast rose on two legs and began to lumber away, taking long, human-like strides. The eyewitness was able to observe the creature for about ten seconds or so. In his estimation, the being stood over eight feet tall, was covered in matted dark brown hair, and had long arms with huge, human-like hands as well as a pronounced jaw and brow ridge on its head. Following the encounter, the gentleman evidently had trouble sleeping for days and was hesitant to tell his wife about what he had seen. In his own words, I have personal visual evidence 
of a so-called mythical beast, and I do not know what to do with it. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!